It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us, helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. Dads, we've got a gift for you. I don't know if, if, if you're getting it when you come in or when you're leaving. When you're leaving, make sure you make sure you see one of our greeters as you're going out the door. We've got a little Father's Day gift for all the dads here today. Well, today is awesome. We are continuing our uh, home cooking series here because this church is blessed with so many great ministers. And uh, it's, it makes it wonderful. You don't have to sit here and, and look at my ugly mug uh, preaching to you every Sunday because we've got some amazing, just spirit-filled preachers right here in this church. And this this month is our opportunity to get to hear from some of them. Today, uh, uh, just one of my favorite guys on the whole planet. He's a good friend. He's also... Uh, our youth pastor, Derek, is uh, he's brilliant. As you can see, he's talented. He plays every instrument known to man. He can play it all. And, uh, but today, he's going to be delivering some of his, his awesome wisdom to you. I know he does a great job in the teens when, he, when he's in there teaching the teens because, hey, you know, my, I've got a 14-year-old who's like one of the toughest critics, and he'll like let you know if you don't bring it. And uh, he tells me every time, man, Mr. Derek is so smart, and he's funny, and he like really, really blesses him. And so I'm excited that we get, us adults, get to hear what Derek Tice has to say to us today. Derek, come on up. Give him a welcome. All right, am I on? All right. We weren't sure how this microphone was going to work because I wasn't going to use that one that Scott uses, the wrong color. <laughs> no. So you don't have a brown one up there? No. I don't like anything wrapped around my ears, so I wouldn't, it wouldn't work. But anyhow, happy Father's Day to everybody, to the dads and the fathers and the poppies and the dotties and the uh, oppas and everything else. I'm just grateful to be a father. Um, Anyone who knows us, me and my wife, before we were married, and when we got married, weren't expected to have kids, and God bless us with three of them. Um, wouldn't trade it for the world. I love my kids, and uh, I'm just, I'm so thankful to be a father. It's taught me so much as a human being, and it talks, teaches me more about God and all those kind of things. And um, I mean, it's not only Father's Day, but like Scott has said, it's Juneteenth, and I didn't even, I didn't even know. I'm talking about freedom today. Freedom is the name of my message, and I didn't even know it was Juneteenth until Wednesday, and I have a, a government account, so there was an email that was going across, and they were talking about being like an observed holiday on Monday the 20th, and I'm like, what holiday is June? And so I, I finally I figured it out, and I was like, oh, it's Juneteenth on the 19th, and I forgot the president made it a holiday last year, and, and then I was like, okay, what's Juneteenth again? And so I, I looked it up, and it's like, it's a black man, you don't know what's Juneteenth? And it's like, hey, I'm just happy to be free every day. So anyhow, so praise God, we's free, we's free. <laughs> so today, I'm not, I don't have like a Father's Day message or anything like that, but I'm, I'll be talking about our Heavenly Father, and I'll be talking about freedom. It's Freedom Day, so this is how, like I was talking to Pastor Scott, it was, like, it was amazing how it all just fell together. I didn't, this, this was not planned, but uh, maybe it was by, planned by somebody, I don't know. 
So anyhow, um, I remember a, there was a long time ago I was reading this article in a magazine. Um, it was like years ago, maybe 20 years ago, and it was a Writer's Digest, I think, and it, was, it wasn't even an article about anything special. It was just an article about writing fiction or something like that, and I was reading it, and this thing stood out to me, and it said, um, there's freedom and discipline. And that, for some reason, that just always stuck to me, and I, I kind of rode with that. And it, it wasn't like I was reading a Bible verse or anything. Like it was just a, something in, a, in an article. And apparently, this is a, a saying that's taught a lot in, like, motivational speakers and all those kind of things, freedom and discipline. And so that always stuck with me. And I, and I just know as God has kind of been with me and taught me through the years, that, that word, that sentence would always kind of stick with me, freedom and discipline. What does that mean? And so this kind of led me to the message I have today. And it's been on my heart for a while, and I just kind of, I think I might have taught it in the youth, not this particular message, but just kind of that, kind of wrapped around that same thing. But the, the thing about freedom, and I'm not talking about the kind of freedom that we, I guess, would be celebrated today, freedom of slavery and stuff like that, physically. But, of course, we're talking about a spiritual freedom. Um, so we've got to understand that true freedom is not doing whatever you want. Because right. doing whatever we want is not always the right thing. It's not always the right way. It's not always the best way or the, or the best way. Uh, it could also, doing whatever you want could hurt others. It could hurt ourselves. So it could be a dangerous thing just to kind of go and, and just do anything. So I use metaphors. So if you guys, I've, I've used metaphors. And so just work with me here. And so if I throw any of you guys off, if I say anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, just ride with me. And I'm not going to say anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, but some people are sensitive about stuff. So, okay. <laughs> but anyhow, so I've had, uh, five years ago, I had to put my best dog I ever had down. Pebbles, little rat terrier, and uh, she was with us for about 17 years, we think. She might have been like 35, we don't even know. She just kept on going, but uh, she was great. She was like the perfect dog. She was like uh, near perfect. My wife might say different sometimes, but uh, to me, she was just special because she had been with our family. She, she belonged to a family here at church for a while when she was a puppy, then my, my niece got her, my mom brought her home, and gave it to my niece, and then uh, and my niece gave it to us. And this dog is just uh, Pebbles. She was just so obedient. She was wise, she was smart, she, could, she was crafty. She would get in all kinds of stuff. But this is the kind of dog where she was just so obedient. I can just be out and about, outside the house, walking around, without a leash, and she would just be with me. And she can kind of wander off and kind of do, do her thing, but I can just say, Pebbles, come on back, you know, and she'll, and she'll obey. Or sometimes I won't have to say anything at all. I just snap my fingers and she comes back. And she was awesome. You know, we could have people over and she's chilling and she's just cool with everybody and, and it was great. So now we got this dog now, Winter. <laughs> and uh, and I, I told myself after we put Pebbles down, I was like, I was done. I'm not going to have any more dogs. And, uh, and then like the months went by and I was like, man. And then I was talking to my daughter, Melody, and she was like, yeah, I really want a dog, you know. And, and I said, we started looking at all these different uh, dogs to adopt and all those things. Long, long story short, our neighbors have uh, her, their daughter-in-law has a, like a dog rescue. And they knew we were looking for like a schnauzer or something like that, something in that realm. And so we, they showed it, sent us a picture and it was like this, we didn't know what it was. <laughs> and the picture had like it, the eyes glue, I guess from the camera flash. And, it's like, what is that, you know? And it's, so we went to go see her, and she was cute. I mean, she looked terrible because whoever had her last just didn't take care of her, and her hair was all like in dreadlocks and, and all those things. <laughs> Little Rastafarian dog. And, and so we walked in there, and she claimed us. It was like, we got this picture, like the, the, the dog uh, adoption place took of us, and she's like in there smiling, and I mean, she, she like claimed us. And uh, so we got her, and we weren't sure if we were going to, I mean, we, 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 we weren't gonna, we were going to take her home and try her out. We were going to be like a foster uh, family, just kind of try her out, see if she was okay. And, you know, she was all right. She kept us up all night and uh, kept us all night the next night. Drove us crazy. And then I was thinking, okay, this is not going to work out. We're going to have to. So we told the people, so we're going to have to get, probably give this dog back. And she said, okay, well, you can just kind of be a foster family and we'll just we'll find a family. The family is also looking. And so this family came to our house, came to see the dog, and the dog just rawr, 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 barking at him, just going crazy. It's like, come on, you know, you're not even representing yourself. <laughs> and uh, 
So I, we fought, I find a side, long story short, I just remember just sitting down and she was snuggling with my son and I was like, this dog's at home, you know, we're, we're gonna keep her. And so we told her we're gonna keep her and I kind of regret it, you know. <laughs> my point is, is that this dog is just, uh, she's sweet as can be, she looks like a, a gray shag carpet, and, uh, but she just barks at everything. When the door is open, she's gone, and you gotta go chase her, and she puts herself in danger, you know, running off like that, you know, because we live right in front of a busy street in our neighborhood, and cars are always going by, so if she goes out in that road, you know, she's gonna get hit or killed or something like that, or, and uh, us getting killed trying to chase her, and she won't, hey, Winter, Winter, you're calling her, and she's trying to get her, and she won't come back, and she won't come back until she finds something that stinks, which is probably, <laughs> probably dog urine or whatever it is, and, and, if, and she can't shake it, so she's, and you, finally you can get catch up to her, and she just can't shake it, she can't get off of it, <laughs> then you can get her, all right, come on, and uh, so I finally, and I remember, Scott, you were over picking up Mason one, I think last year, and he, and she barks at everyone who comes up to the house, and so he was down there, and you know, and she comes down the stairs, winter, quiet, quiet, and then Scott's so sweet, he's all oh, puppy, oh, you know, and she's all, oh, and she's loving it, they bump fists, and she goes back upstairs, and, and everything's cool. About a few minutes go by, Scott's turned the other way. She comes back downstairs, rah, 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 rah. it's like it's the same person. <laughs> Y'all just met. And uh, so I, I finally took her aside one time, and I was like, why do you, why do you bark? Why do you do that? And she, and she looked at me, and she was like, I can't help it. <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, and it's like, I was like, okay, we're going to get you a bark collar. You know, we're going to take care of that. So my point is, is that Pebbles, she heeded the master's voice. She stood, she stood near. She was free to do whatever because she wasn't, obedient. She wasn't disobedient. She, just, she knew the master. She knew her home. She was, you know, she was great. But in winter, she won't listen. She won't come back. Now, she's got a lot better at um, running out the door because my family did a good job of kind of just kind of training her, but we still don't trust her because we know... <laughs> If that door's wide open, she's gone. But uh, with Pebbles, you can have the door wide open, you can have just anything. And if she wanders out, you say, Pebbles, come on back. She'll come on back, you know, no big deal. Winter, she's all right. I'm, I just want to say, just let her go. Let her be free, you know. <laughs> she don't have to come back, so. So my point, I'll just use this as, as an illustration. Um, I have something else to say about the dog, but I'll just I'll keep going. So <laughs> um, my illustration is that Pebbles, she was disciplined, and her discipline, and in her discipline, she's free. She has freedom. With Winter, in her instinct, her uncontrollable instinct, she has restrictions. She, she has a, she's confined. And so she's, she doesn't have the freedom that Pebbles had. And so just talking about ourselves, we ourselves, we have this, this, this instinct within us, this, um, this craving. I call it a CPA, and I don't mean certified public accountant, I mean comfort, pleasure, and acceptance. And this is like this innate craving that we have of, we want that, we want this pleasure, we want this comfort, we want this acceptance. And uh, we want what pleases us, and we, this kind of behavior kind of re reflect us in the world around us. We, we kind of push this on other people that we want people to do what we want them to do. We want people to think the way we want them to think. We want people to say the things we want them to say. And it's selfish. So we have this selfish nature that causes us to, without even realizing, we're poisoning ourselves, we're poisoning the people around us, we're poisoning the world around us by, by this selfish nature. And this is, and this is basically the, the problem, and this is basically what enslaves us. This is how we're not free. And this is what, this is what God has shown us through the scriptures always. And this is something that we always miss because we think, because we naturally feel this way, we naturally behave this way that, you know, this is the way to act. So the problem is the selfish nature is the sinful nature. You know, that's what it is. And the sin is the destruction of freedom. It twists and distorts the ways of freedom. It twists and distorts the way of justice. And it's just not good. That's the problem. It's the problem with the world. It's the problem with, with ourselves. And as the scriptures teach, we must die to sin. We must die to ourselves. We must die to the selfish nature in order to be free. 
So when we die, we, and we, we die from this selfish nature by how? By following Jesus, by following the master, the one who perfected um, humanity, who perfected this body and, um, and just made it the way God wants it. So let's just uh, go through the verses here. In John chapter 8, verse 31, and this is Jesus speaking, and, um, and, he, and it says, To the Jews who believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Now, the, uh, the root word of discipline is disciples, which is, you know, that's easy to know. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be, that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The son being Jesus. And so this is why Jesus came. He came to set us free. And we say set us free? Set us free from sin. Set us free from this craving, this desire, this iniquity that we have in us that just causes us to poison ourselves, poison around ourselves, the world around us and those around us, and that's the problem. And the, and the thing is, we have to die to ourselves. We have to put this thing to death in order to be free. Uh, we have to take the selfish nature, which is enslaving us, and put it to death. Now, we're going to go through a, a whole roll of scriptures here because the Bible says it all, and I might as well just read it instead of just talk the whole time. So Romans chapter 6, verse 6 and it says, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin, for when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And go down to verse 12, Romans 6, 12. It says, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give into sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you, for you were dead but now you have life, new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Now the law, I mean, I'm not gonna get into the whole technical thing about it because us modern day Western Americans, we can care less about the, uh, the law of Moses, uh, which is unfortunate because the Old Testament what we call the Old Testament, or we can call it the, the Law of Moses, the, the Torah, the Pentateuch, all those little technical terms, but it's just basically the commandments that were laid out for the nation of Israel back in those days, and what we know about the Ten Commandments and all the commandments that led to, it's basically, we gotta understand that the, the law that God put down was not meant to confine, it was not meant to uh, restrict, it was not meant to enslave, it was not meant to, um, become a, a system of legalization. But the problem was that the Israelites and what became the Jewish leaders and the, the, the leaders of the, the teachers of the law, they took it and legalized it. And it was legalized because of the, again, the selfish, sinful nature, which let that thing become an enslaving thing to it. So when you see Paul and is talking about the law and being set free and having this freedom, he's talking about this law, which became uh, this thing of conviction of sin and stuff like that. So it's not that the law that God put forth was something bad, but it was that what the people did with it was wrong. It was a track that God put down that was supposed to set us rolling and free, but couldn't handle it. So, but again, he's talking about freedom from the law, but he's also talking about freedom from sin. And we, have, we, we live in this grace now, in God's grace. So again, we must die in order to be free, not die physically, but die to our selfish nature. Galatians 5.1, it says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves to be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So we read about in Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 28, and here Jesus is talking. It says, he's like, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke. And again, we're not talking about eggs here. We're talking about, I always got to remind the teens, we're not talking about eggs. It's the yoke. It's that thing you put on domestic animals like oxen or, or cattle, and they use them as, as like a tractor to plow the fields and stuff like that. And so 
yoke was used as a kind of a, a symbol of, so in the, of slavery, of, of servitude. But here Jesus is like saying, hey, look, take my yoke, link up with me, let's do this together, let's go through life together. And I tell you, doing it my way, it is, it's going to be easy. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So it's not the kind of stuff that the world puts on you and the sinful nature puts on you. It's just because we know with our addictions and our, our cravings and stuff like that, it's hard to get off. It's like a yoke around us. And we're just going on this, on this drive with the world and it's just, it's enslaving us. But Jesus like, I'm free. Yoke it with me and you're gonna learn freedom. You're gonna, this is gonna be easy, it's gonna be light compared to this junk that the world puts on you, compared to this junk that your, your old self, your old sinful nature puts on you. Galatians 5, verse 30, uh, 13. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For in the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions, but when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, sinful pleasures, or sorry, lustful pleasures, uh, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Galatians 5.13 is talking about this freedom that we have in Christ. And we are not to take that freedom and use it for whatever we want because the problem with a lot of believers, especially in the West, or I guess anywhere in the world, is, oh, Jesus set us free, we are free from the law, so we can kind of just do whatever we want because Jesus gave us salvation and all we gotta do, all we, our whole mission is just to go to heaven, right? No. So the scriptures here are saying, you don't, you don't just go around and just take freedom. Jesus sacrificed himself, not for you just to go out and keep sinning. He sacrificed himself for you to be free from sin, to be restored back to the intention, the original way that we were supposed to be, like our Father in heaven, and to be linked back with him. It wasn't just to be, just to do whatever we want. Because again, that creates chaos, and that's not what God's about. We need to, we, uh, we are free to love, and when we love, we are emulating our Savior. We are emulating Jesus, our Master, and we're acting like our Heavenly Father. And the problem is, is that sin is the absence of true love. And so, because it's selfish, you know, so when you're, and we know, we read 1 Corinthians Chapter 13 is the love chapter, and it's talking about how love is not selfish. It is not self-seeking. And so, this, so if we're only out for ourselves and we're only out to get people to do what we want them to do, then we are enslaved to that, and we are enslaving them into our own desires. True love is not selfish, but the selfish nature lacks love. So the problem is, is if we want something, we, if, if someone doesn't give us what we want, we lash out at them. If they're not saying what we want them to say or they don't believe what we believe, we demonize them, we, we, uh, we just discredit them. Or if, you know, if, if my spouse is not you know, meeting my urges, I'm gonna go out and get it somewhere else. So this is what this, these, uh, this verse is talking about. It's just talking about these, these sins that we have and how it's all based on poisoning people and enslaving people to do what we want them to do. It's all about getting what we want, it's all about what pleases us, what makes us feel good, what makes us look good, it's, it's selfishness. It's, it's all about selfishness and pride, and that's the way of Satan. 
That's, that's the attitude of Satan. It's not the attitude of God, our Heavenly Father. That's not how he created us. That is not freedom. It's selfishness. So when we're set free from sin, we are led by the Holy Spirit, and God pours out his goodness into us, his divine nature. Then we can take that goodness of his and spread it to those around us, even to our enemies. And we begin to help others get free. So that's the thing. We're not supposed to take our selfishness to enslave people. We're supposed to take the love that God gives us and his goodness to free people. Freedom. That's what it's all about. And again, it is better to give than receive. It, you know, it breaks my heart when I see my brothers and sisters in Christ, and even those who I don't even know they are real Christians, they, you know, they come to the church and because they, they know the church is a place where people are going to give and they're going to be kind and they're going to do all these things, but they kind of take it for granted and they never, they never return. They never return the, the goodness. They just kind of take, take, take. And it's kind of unfortunate. Now, we, we keep giving. We don't put them out, but the whole point is for all of us to give, all of us to set each other free, all of us to be selfless, so that it just, it's this infinity that just keeps going. You know, we're, we're all just happy, we're all free, we're all in it together. It has to go both ways, just like love, it has to go both ways. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. This is how we should live. We should live by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us, to comfort us, to lead us. He didn't leave, you know, he didn't leave us alone. And so this was all about. If we're living by the Spirit, the posture, the very direction of our heart is, is directed towards God. It's in tandem with God. We're yoked together and linked together with God. And we aren't concerned about the things of this world or about what pleases us. And we're not, and, but our, we are pressing forward to the goal of being more like our Heavenly Father. That's what it's all about. It's not about what we want, it's about what He wants. It's about linking up our will, or His will becoming our will, and so forth. It's about us being like Him, His love, love to one another, freeing people by giving your love. That's what it's all about. And think about it, if you're living by the Spirit, you're free. The Spirit is wind. Is freedom. Wind is free. So you're like a kite, just, you know, one of the worst things is like you have your balloon and it gets taken out of your hand and it's blown away and you cry. And it's a terrible thing. <laughs> but that balloon is free now, you know. So trust, trusting God is freedom. Surrendering to God is freedom. Learning and knowing God's word is freedom. Loving God and loving others is freedom. This is freedom. This is what it is. And I, I like this Psalm, Psalm 119, uh, learning and knowing God's word is freedom. So this is, just, I like how this Psalm puts it together. And the Psalmist writes here in verse 41, he says, may your unfailing love to me, Lord, your salvation, yeah, may your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth for I have put my hope in your, in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings, and I will not be put to shame, for I delight in your commands because I love them. I reach out, um, I reach out for your commands, which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. And that's what it's all about. God's word is just freeing. So that just as I've been just walking with God through the years from my, from my teen years up to my adult years, and I can't tell you enough how the Word of God has just been such a enriching thing, and it just never ceases, never ceases, because you think, a lot of people read it like it's a novel. Yeah, I read the Bible, yeah, cover, cover to cover, and I'm done, and it's like, it's not a, it's not Gilgamesh, you know, it's, it's a, I hate using the, the word a life manual, but, but it's, it's God's letter to us throughout all the generations, and and even though it was written in ancient times, it's so relevant today, and it's just amazing, and it's life-changing, and it's, it just breaks bondages off your life. I've, I've had so much just break off, not just from reading the scriptures, because you can't just read it by itself. It's like taking a bar of soap and just rubbing it on your body, you know. You might smell good, but you're going to burn yourself. You've got to add some water. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is that water. 
So you lubricate, get all sudsy, bubbling up. The spirit and the word goes together, you know. And so that's, the, that's why you have these people go to, um, what's that called when you go to preaching school? Seminary. Seminary, yeah. I was about to, I was about to say synagogue. So uh, <laughs> you have all these people that go to seminary, and they just go there just to kind of learn the technical thing about the Bible, but they don't get the spirit. They don't get the Holy Spirit. They don't get the essence of what uh, was being taught, the very thing that they're learning. And so it just becomes something that they just talk about on the History Channel, and it's just dry. It makes you smell good, but it's burning you. You need some water. You need to add the spirit. All right, so what is it like having anger? What is it like having hatred? What is it like having fear and anxiety? It's bondage. You know, so we have this anger towards a group or anger towards a person. We have this hatred towards a group, hatred towards a person. When we are so fearful about a group or whatever, just fear about life and anxiety, worried about stuff, you are in bondage. And that's not, what, that's not how God, that's not the way, the kind of life that God wants you to have. It's also not the way that God has designed you to live. He wants you to be free from that. And so we got to understand that being a Christian is not about do's and don'ts. And I think that's the problem that we have, a lot of believers have, even young believers, because they're trying to find out what they can get away with. And uh, is it, if it's a sin if I do this, what, how about if I do this? If I do that and that and carry the one, is that? It's like, it's like, no, that's not how it works. It's about a relationship with your heavenly father. Amen. We are to be like him because we are his children. I want my children to be li- like me. Not always, but... Because I do have problems, but it's true. When you raise your kids, you're training them in the way they should go, and the way they should go, you're thinking it's your, the way that you are, whether that's right or wrong. But we know that our Heavenly Father is free, and He is good. Amen. And He's made us to be free and good. And that's, that's His whole purpose. So we can't miss that. So let's don't be, and, and again, Christians can be legalistic too, because we sit there and say, well, you can't do that, you can't say that, you can't do this, da, da, da. It shouldn't be about trying to do the do's and don'ts. It should be about following Christ, and it all just falls into place because you be, he begins to rub off on you, and you are linked up with him, and you're walking with him, and just all this stuff begins to fall off, chains and everything starts to fall off because you're with him and because he's free. He is patient. He is gentle. He is, he is um, just tolerant and loving and kind and gentle and awesome, and we got to remember that. So if we want to be slaves to anything, it's to be slaves to God. Romans chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led to ever deeper into sin, even deeper into sin. Now you, you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteousness, living so that you will become holy. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the, and what was the result? I like Paul saying, it's like, and what happened when you did that? He's like, now you're ashamed of those things that you used to do, things that ended in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do those things that lead to holiness and result to eternal life. In 1 Peter verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 16, it says, Live as free people. Do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. That's what it's all about. So be free. Be free from sin. Be free from the law. But link up with God. And the, and the word slave here is not really slave. It's more like a servant, a willing servant to follow so Brennan really liked that. <laughs> Ain't nothing funny about being whipped? No. Anyhow, I'm messing with you. That's my sister. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to kind of sum all this up. So Jesus, we know Jesus turns the world upside down with his teachings. You know, he comes in, he's saying stuff like the last shall be first and the first should be last and uh, the strong should serve the weak and love your enemies and all this kind of stuff, stuff that's just contrary to the way we think, the way, you know, that we process in our minds. Um, and this, this is the, the thing, the nature that Jesus is bringing to us. And so we know that the night before he was going to be crucified, you know, he's in the garden and he's praying and he's telling God, 
God, there's any way that this can be taken from me. Because he knows exactly what's going to happen. He knows the, the, the suffering he's going to go through, the weight of the world on his sh shoulder, the, all of the sin of humanity poured upon him in its complete agony. And place it, how he's going to be tortured under the, the Roman, um, Roman control. But here he's saying, Father God, not my will, but your will be done. And so this is the mindset that we have to have. God, not what we want to do, but what you want to do, what your will is. And this is not human thinking. This is not natural. This, the ability to reject our own nature is divine. And so that's what makes Jesus divine. Jesus is, is God in the flesh, but he's showing us how to be. He wants us to be the children of God like he is the son of God. This is divine thinking this way because our, our own selfish, natural self doesn't like to suffer. You know, we try to find ways not to suffer. And so when we say, God, your will be done, no matter, how it's, no matter what the result is, whether I'm suffering or whether I'm becoming a living sacrifice, I'm following your will because your will is the best, it is perfect, Amen. it is amazing. And again, just talking about myself, just when I'm not following God, it goes bad. Or it goes, it goes super, super long. <laughs> it could have been shorter. But, um, but when I am, it's amazing. And you just see when you're being faithful, and no matter how, you just feel like you're running through a hamster wheel, and then you... Next thing you know, you open your eyes and you are in a whole new place, and it's amazing. And you see how he, he, he's like, see, just wait on me, and you'll see. Walk with me, and you'll see. Follow my will, and you will see. You will be free, and your freedom will be awesome. So God's will is where freedom is. It's not our will. So this is how we find freedom, walking in God's will, by the Holy Spirit listening to his word, walking in it. We are to act like God acts. Jesus said in uh, Matthew 5, verse 41, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. This is Jesus saying this. Act like God. Love like God. Have his nature so that you may be his children. He is leading us to that. To be children of the Heavenly Father means acting as the Heavenly Father would act. And, and then Jesus goes on to say in Matthew 5, 48, he says, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. He's directing towards that. And again, this perfect is not talking about the perfect that we think of. It's more like acting in complete accord with God's will, with his divine will. That's the per perfection that he's talking about. So just summing all this up is that we know when we go back into Genesis chapter 1, and we see where when God created the world, the, and the, the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and chaotic and, and void, and there was darkness. That's chaos. And God doesn't like chaos because chaos is not freedom. It's, it's just destruction. It's, it's terrible. He brought order to it when he created it, and, he, and, he, and we see the account on how he created it. And after he created everything, he said what? It is good. So order is good. So if we have this mentality where we're doing our will, we're doing what we want to do, we take freedom and just do whatever we want, that's chaotic, that's anarchy, that's just destruction because everyone's doing their own thing and we're not designed this way. We're designed to be in harmony with our Heavenly Father. Just like when we're playing the instruments up here, if I was playing something and then Daniel was playing something and then Scott was playing something and Mel was singing something and everyone's singing their own thing, it's chaos, it's noise, it sounds terrible. But when we're in tune and we're in harmony and we're playing together, we make beautiful music together. We make sweet harmony. I'm not going to start singing, all right. Denying God's will, denying his nature, creates chaos. Conflicting wills, other wills coming together and conflicting, it creates chaos. Chaos is evil. It's darkness. It's disorder. That's not the ways of God. That's not how God created it. That's not how God created freedom. But order is good. It's purpose. It's harmony. And so we got to think of order not... Some, some people think about order and we think of like dictatorships and stuff like that. No, there's free order and then there's forced order. Our God offers free order. 
Because if he didn't, then we would just be slaves. God didn't create us to be slaves. He didn't create us to be puppets. He didn't create us to be robots. He created us to be children. And he's showing us what it's like. He set two people out into the world, stark naked, free. <laughs> and um, he said, you are free to do whatever, but just don't do this one thing. And then they messed all that up. But you got to remember, God set us free, and, but he, he did it in, a, in an order. He created this world. He set order. He set the universe in order, not chaos, and he set us free in it. And it, it didn't become chaotic until we sinned. And then again, it became wills conflicting with one another, wills conflicting with our Father's will, and just destroying all kinds of things. So God the Father is free. God the Son has set us free. God the Holy Spirit leads us into freedom. The fullness of the Godhead is working to make us free, to make us truly free, to make us forever free. This is the whole will. This is the, the whole intent of God from the beginning was for us to be free forever. Um, this whole sin thing just kind of just messed everything up, kind of put everything off path. But thank God that he is faithful, that he is consistent, that he is true, that he loves us. And he was like, nah, -uh. I ain't going to let this sin thing mess everything up. I got plans. I got plans forever. We're not talking about strumming on a harp and angels flying around dropping grapes in our mouth. We're talking about living in this universe and God putting order to this universe and using us and, and leading us with him and, and doing all these great things. So there comes a time we need to realize that God's desire is for us to be truly free, to be truly set free. And we have addictions, we have cravings, we have angers, we have fear, we have anxiety, and these things enslave us. And they make us, they make us sick. They make us bad people, you know? They make us bad parents, they make us bad husbands and wives, they make us, you know, it's, just, it's not God's nature. But God's nature is holy and loving and just and good and merciful and gracious and faithful. It's patient and truthful and wise. Just think of the, list, listen that off. It sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Maybe it's just the way I'm saying it. But uh, <laughs> all, those, all those attributes are just wonderful. Because you think of someone who's nice and, and loving and gentle, it's, it's a nice thing, right? But someone who is harsh and brutal and stinks and whatever else, those are bad things, you know? We, no one wants to be around those kind of people. God doesn't want to be around those pe people either. You know, he's like, hey, I feel the same way. That's why I'm trying to get you guys clean. Don't just use soap, use water. Word and spirit, live by the spirit, live by the word. Suds up, clean yourselves up, and work, walk with me. Link yourselves up with Christ. So order versus chaos. God doesn't like chaos. Living free, doing our own thing, creates chaos. Living in God's will, that's where freedom is. He is free. If he's free, you go to the one who is free, who knows freedom, so that we walk in freedom. And that's what it's all about. So if any of you guys are, or any of us are struggling with bondage of any sort, maybe unforgiveness, maybe just you can't forgive yourself, you have addictions, any of those kind of things, follow Christ, follow God, and he will break them from you. I've had addictions broken off my life, and it's just been so so awesome and God's so faithful and it's years have gone by and it's still I'm just free I don't even think about it anymore and it's just so awesome and so trust him and don't do it your way do it his way link yourself up in his will because his will there's freedom amen? amen awesome okay that's the conclusion but we are going to uh, do communion um, so if you need to get your elements go ahead and get them together um, I, I've got mine stashed away over here. So while you're getting your elements, I just, you know, we know communion is this, uh, this wonderful thing that Jesus has given us to do as a remembrance of what he, what he did for us. And we know in order for us to be free was by him having to come and die, to take on our sins, and that his bloodshed on the cross gives us our freedom. It sets us free, and 
And it's not only through his death, but it's also through his life. All the things he's taught us. He's taught us the, the will of the Father so that we may be free. He's taught us just the goodness of his grace and his mercy. He's taught us how to love so that we can be free and that we can set other people free by loving them. And this is what it's all about. So when we take these elements, when we do communion, we're not only remembering what Jesus, our Holy God, our Holy, God, our Holy Savior, did for us in setting us free, but uh, we cast a mind to that day, but we also are just thankful that his love for us was just so, so strong that he went through this for us. And so we remember. So let's pray. Holy God, we thank you so much, God, for your goodness, your grace. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for coming, for being you, for being the light, the way, the truth, for teaching us everything we need to know, and then also laying down your life and taking on the punishment that was due us upon yourself. Upon your body, God, you were bruised for our transgressions, wounded for our iniquities. And we thank you, God, that you take on our sickness, and not just our physical sickness, but the sickness of our hearts, the sickness of our minds, the sickness of our souls. And you healed us, and you set us free. And so we take this bread as remembrance of you, Lord Jesus, of the punishment you took on for our sins. We take the bread. And God, this cup is this remembrance of your, your blood shed for us. And we thank you for your blood shed, which washes away all our sins and sets us free and makes us clean and makes us presentable to the Father that we may be yours forever. So we take the cup. Amen. Well, thank you guys for sitting there and tolerating me. You know, it's kind of different when I'm teaching the teens. They're eating snacks and they're talking to each other. And so I'm just like, I throw it out there, hope it falls, and hope they learn something. But no, I love them, and it, it's just great to be able to, it's an honor to be up here and, and have this time to be able to share with you guys in the, in the sanctuary and my brothers and sisters. And, and then those of you guys are streaming and watching and, and all those things. But I just want to make sure that we just continue just to walk with God in, in, in our everyday life. And again, if you guys are struggling with anything, uh, the prayer partners can uh, come on down and you can just come up and let them, let them pray for you. Let them believe with you because it is in prayer and it's in, in um, prayer that we have together. It's what helps because they're in the midst of one or more. There's, there's, there's Jesus. And he's there to, um, we need, you need people to agree with us and to know what we're going through because as the slogan of our church is, no one walks alone. And so... Don't walk it along. Let, let us help you set you free. Was there anything else, sir? That's good. Okay, guys. Uh, all rise. Always want to do that. <laughs> Hear you? All right. I just want to bless you guys and just say have an awesome week. Happy Father's Day. Happy Freedom Day. Take this day and just remember these, these scriptures and just take it with you and just kind of meditate them through the week and just see what God does. Have a good day. Thank you guys. Bye.